the Lord had been speaking to my heart. Nia and I have been going, and I'm just, I, I like to preach real. Like, yes. I'm not standing up here like I'm not a real human being, and I don't go through real things. And, you know, I'm just like floating on clouds every day of the week because I'm definitely not. Um, and the Lord spoke to my heart. And it was something that I preached a while back, but he brought it back to my remembrance. And how many of you know that we, we need to be reminded? Amen. We quickly forget some things when things begin to arise in our life. And the, and the Lord spoke to me this, and this is the title of my message. For I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. For I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And we're coming from 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18. When Naya was singing this song, where's Manny? Is Manny in here? No? Got the kids. Oh, okay. He was doing an awesome job on those drums. Yeah. They all do an awesome job, but he was Amen. getting it over there. And it was saying, step by step, I'm moving forward. Little by little, I'm taking ground. Every prayer, a powerful weapon. Strongholds come tumbling down and down and down. And I was thinking about that because we were at the beach this last weekend. And in the waves, Nye and I went out the first day. No one else was there. It was just us. And it was beautiful. I mean, we could float in the water, you know, and we would just go over the waves, and it was nice. But the next day, Hannah and them show up, and the waves are crashing. I mean, the kids are, like, getting thrown this way and that way, and I'm like, oh, Lord. But that's how life can be sometimes. We get in the water, and we're walking in the spirit, and we're, we're going where the wind blows, and we're like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm serving the God most high. And we're, see, situations are still coming, but we could be floating over them, right? But all of the sudden, something a little more difficult comes our way that wants to knock us down and drag us under. And, and then all of a sudden, you get hit by a couple of them, and you stand up, and you're halfway down the beach. <laughs> and then I looked up at one point, and our stuff was, like, all the way down there. And we're, like, all the way down here. And I was like, that's how our walk can be sometimes when we're not paying attention and we're getting knocked to and fro but you know what I love about the Lord is he is not intimidated by those waves he is not intimidated by your circumstance he's not intimidated by your situation how big or how small it might be but there has to be something within you brother Shane he preached a great message. Amen. And in your how, there's a Holy Ghost. And man, Jane, I'm telling you, I heard that all week. Because if you ever tried to buy a house, and I and I are in the process of buying or wanting to buy a house, and you know you have to jump through all the hoops and the hoopla and the up and the down, and, the, and you got it, you don't, and this. And I'm like, Lord Jesus. And I just kept hearing that, Shane. In the how, there's a Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because I don't know how, but there's a Holy Ghost. And he is the or he's orchestrating it all. And I, man, thank you. Thank you, because that message was powerful. But it also brought me to Elijah's life. Because he heard a sound of an abundance of rain. But before he got to the rain, there was a process and a journey that he went through. And I love the characters of the Bible because I like to watch their journey. Like, I don't just get to the rain. I know we want the rain. And I'm believing for the rain. But there was a process from when he heard the rain to when he received the rain. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. If you would read with me in 1 Kings 18, verse 41. It starts off with, and, and Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel, and he came.
cast himself down upon the earth and put his face. I want you to pay attention to the position of this man. He cast himself to the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. I want to say that to you this morning. Yes, yes. Go again. Hallelujah. See, because there's a sound. Yes. And the Lord's given you a promise. Hallelujah. And we go to the Lord and we ask him. And years pass. And we get discouraged. And I'm telling you this morning, yes. get up. It's a commitment. 
It's a loyalty. And we should be being loyal to the things of God. We should be trusting him and believing him despite what our circumstances look like. And King Ahab, he was the seventh king and he reigned 22 years and he married Jezebel. And if you know any, if you know anything about Jezebel, Jezebel worshipped different gods. And what she did is she went and she married King Ahab and she enticed him to in, abandon his worship to the true God. Be careful who you surround yourself with. Be care okay, let's say be careful who you marry. Be careful who you enter into relationship with. And I'm not just talking about an um, uh, uh, intimate relationship. I'm talking about a friendship. I'm talking about a business partner. I'm talking about somebody that you hang out with on a daily basis that could entice you to follow different things or to believe different things or to go another way. Sever those ties. Sever those ties because God has a plan for your life. And if it's a friend, it's not really a friend if they're telling you to go the wrong way. It's not really a business partner, a business partner that I would want to be in business with if they're not paying their taxes, if they're cutting corners here and there. I don't want to be in business with that. And I talk, I talk to Robert all the time because I'm running my own personal training business and I'm like man if I feel like I'm drawing the line on the mileage I just put my mileage under because I'd rather be right with God than, than something on my taxes and that takes character and integrity and sometimes you gotta stand alone in those places the, the normal people don't want to hear that they want to hear how they can get ahead quickly they want to hear how they can get so listen I'm just, God you. He will honor you. Yes. He's going to give you a great friend or get great family members. Or I mean, I tell Robert all the time, I was like, man, you guys are my family. You, This is my family. I mean, I love my family to death, but if I have to call someone, I call the church. And that's how the body of Christ right. should be. So anyway, I say all that to say that Jezebel enticed her husband to go the wrong way. And because he was king, it affected everyone in the nation. Fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, friends. If you decide to allow sin to reign in your life and you turn away from the one true God, it will affect others. You will affect your family. You will affect your business. You Listen, Jonah, get off the boat if you're going to do that. Okay? Because I don't want to be in the perfect storm according to someone else's sin and what's going on. So be careful. But what I love about God is the same way you can infect others is the same way when the Spirit of God is moving in your life, you can be contagious to others. And the Spirit of God can overflow into other people's lives. Amen. So choose this day whom you will serve. Where does your allegiance and your loyalty lie? There's no fence. You can't ride the fence. Ahab couldn't marry Jezebel and, you know, over here be a little enticed, but then go serve Yahweh. There's no fence. You're going to serve one or the other. And this affected all of Israel, but there was a man of God in Israel that was standing for the righteousness of God. And Elijah's name meant God is Jehovah. And he was one of the greatest prophets to ever have lived. And I love it because he shows up on the scene and he's not even introduced. Hmm. Like he just shows up by divine appointment and the Holy Spirit begins to move. Hallelujah. I want to be that woman of God. And I know you want to be women and men of God. That when you show up on the scene, wherever you might be, I don't care if it's Walmart. That the Spirit of God is moving in your life and it's contagious to those around you. That they would see the Spirit of God moving in your life. Mothers, dads, when you worship the Lord and your children see you, grandparents, worship the Lord, it's contagious. They want to worship the Lord. But if you don't, then they see that. If you're a prayer warrior at home, I'm telling you how many stories I heard. My mom was praying. 
I could hear her praying. I could, I could hear dad praying. I could, I could see them praying. And it could be years later that they receive the Lord. But that that's what they, is ingrained in their minds. Mom and dad never stop praying. Grandma and grandpa never stop praying. Never stop telling me about Jesus. It was contagious. They couldn't get away from it. At the darkest of times, with my mom praying behind me, all I remember is my mom praying. <laughs> mom, I could be in the deepest, darkest pit before I was saved, and I remembered my mom yes. was praying. Yes. That's right. yes. My mom was praying. And I, I believe that that's this church, that we want to be a body of Christ, that divine appointment that we run into somebody at the bank or we run into somebody on the street or we're on our job and the anointing of God is just not it likes to say it's seeping through our pores it's just <laughs> seeping and, and, and they can't get away from it oil you can't get away from Naya spilled butter on me when we were eating crabs one time <laughs> and the oil was so hot and I was like whoa and it hurt but then I was like okay but you could barely get it off like you couldn't get get it off and that's how the spirit of God should be on you it should be all over you and when it hits somebody else they should be like whoa what is that what is that I don't have that and they'll be trying to sometimes they'll be running away trying to get it off right but you can't <laughs> you can't get it off glory to God but you know what about the man Elijah? He stood in major opposition to what was going on at the time. And that's the world we live in today. Everything about this world and its system is against the spirit of God, against the word of God um, in, our, in our schools. Everything that's going on is against God. But there was a man. And I'm believing that for this church. That we are the men and we are the women of God that are going to stand in a time when everything is at opposition against us. And why? So these people found themselves in a drought because Ahab started worshiping other gods. So Elijah goes to him and says, God is sending a drought. There shall be no rain. When we allow sin into our lives, the Spirit of God will stop moving and stop operating in your life. And He will cause a drought to come. Right, right, right. Now, I want to say this also. There are times of dry seasons that you're not sinning. Right. Yeah. And I want to make that clear. Because God allows some things to happen to get us to grow, to get us to cry out to Him, yeah. to get us to come to Him. But in this particular instance, they were trusting in false securities. Mm -hmm. So you can be a child of God and you could still be trusting, operating in the spirit of God, loving God, worshiping God, praying to God, coming to God, but still trusting in some false securities. Mm -hmm. A false security is you feel safer than you really are. Mm -hmm. And I want to list some things that I thought about when I was like, okay, what could I have been trusting in? Or what can we trust in? Money. Position. Popularity. Economic status and condition. We can trust in our own spouse. Friendships. Material things. And I was thinking about this woman. I used to babysit her children. <coughs> She recently, her house got struck by lightning. She was from our church in Baton Rouge and lost everything. She, didn't, she got her kids out. She got out and she got her cats. Hmm. But everything she owned, everything was gone. Everything. And I was like, man. Like, and she stood up in the camera, they came, the news truck came, and she was talking about Jesus. Amen. And she was talking about Jesus. Because that's the only thing she could hold on to at the moment. Yep. And I was thinking about that, man, if I, all I could get out was Naya, Alex, and my two dogs, and my whole house burned down, would I have the same reaction? And I pray to God that I would. But could you imagine losing 
And then before that, she lost, and I, I don't think she would mind because she loves the Lord and she gives her testimony. She lost two cars in both floods, her house now, and then she just put up that her mom was re-diagnosed with cancer. Oh. And I was like, okay, Job. Because that's what happened with Job. Everything was getting taken away. But the Lord was allowing it because he, there was a sound still in the distance of an abundance of rain. And I'm believing because she still trusts in the Lord that he's going to restore all back to her. And I'm believing. And I watched the church. Man, the church gathered finances for her, gathered things for her. And thank God for the body, the true body of Christ that will come along someone and restore back to them. But there are some things that we could be trusting in, like if a spouse gets sick or you get sick or someone passes away. Those things can rock our world and rock our faith at times. What if your car breaks down and you don't have any money to get it fixed or you lose your job? All night in one day, jobs was gone. And she'll even give you testimony herself. She was like, man, I was trusting in myself. I, I said, I said, oh, yeah, God's got it. But in the back of my mind, I was saying, okay, I can make some extra money. I got it. And then all of a sudden, within one day, her job was gone and she was crumbling. She was like, oh, my gosh, I was trusting in my job. Right, right. Yep. And it can rock your world. Yep. And it can rock your faith. And the list goes on and on and on. And the Lord put this psalm on my heart. And uh, Brother Shane even spoke on a piece of it. But it says, I, it's a psalm of decree. And it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which maketh heaven and earth. And help in that instance meant to protect and to aid. The Holy Spirit, the parakletos, the one that comes alongside to help you in time of need. When we look to the Lord, he, the, and that, it's a law. It's a spiritual law. When you look to the Lord and you place your faith in him, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes you free. Makes you free. Even in the darkest of situations, when you look to the Lord, he comes to your aid and he comes to your help. And what I love about this, it says, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He will keep you. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't so if it happens to you at 3 a.m., he's there and he's by your side. If it happens to you at 6 a.m., when you can't call a friend, he's there and by your side. When you look to him, he comes to your aid and he comes to your help. The parakletos means, it means rib to rib. You're attached at the hip. You ever have a best friend or a partner that you're just attached to the hip everywhere you go? That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Don't worry. He's right there. He's on time. As soon as you look to him. And they were worshiping these false gods. And they had a, a false sense of control and stability and empowerment. And God was about to rock their world. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to propose to you today. The rain is coming. Are we getting ready? So you got to prepare your field. You got to get ready. If it's going to be, I mean, I want buckets out there. I'm catching all the water, whatever comes my way. I want to dig a ravine because I want all the water that I can get. Whatever God is going to bring my way, I want to be ready to handle it with loyalty and allegiance to him and honor to him and glorify him. Because sometimes we can get some blessings and we can mess them up. That's right. Because we weren't ready. Come on now. And God's going to teach us, go sit down a little bit longer and prepare yourself and let me do the work so I can get you ready. Amen. When you prepare a pot, it get, you, they go through this whole process and then he puts it on the shelf for it to dry to a certain point where it can put the handle on it. But I love it because I was watching this video about a potter. He puts it up there and he's like speaking as the pot because now the potter's over here working on all these other pots and this pot feels lonely and rejected. That it doesn't understand why it's not being taken care of. But little does it know it's in the waiting process because it needs to be a certain point before you put the handle on, before it can be used. And sometimes we need to be, we're in the waiting process of where we can be used and we need to trust the process of the potter and what he is doing in our lives. So I propose 
to you today that God is about to move. God is about to move and you are in a process. But listen, that stirring that you have on the inside of you, don't let it stop. Right. Don't right. quench right. it. Right. Let it keep growing because I hear a sound yeah. of an abundance of rain yeah. and the circumstance will try to snuff it out and your friends might try to snuff it out and your family members are like, really, Angela, is that really going to happen? And they might try to snuff it out. Even some people from the church be like, you are crazy. God's not going to do that. And but you know that yes. you know yes. that you know that God has spoken something to you and that you're going to hold on to it. Yes. Hold on to it. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And the setting of this well let me say this. Your faith is going to produce that which you believe in. It's your faith that's right. going to, it's the ingredient that's going to produce what you what you don't think is possible right now. Yeah. You you my God might have spoken to you and you could be like Sarah and laugh. Yeah. But you know what I love about God is it's a promise still came to pass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we can look at him and be like, yeah, right, God, okay. Did you see what I just did yesterday? But God is still going to meet that need because he's merciful and he's gracious. And the, the, the condition of these people, it says, and you don't have to go there. I'm just going to really quick give you an overview. It said, and it came to pass after many days, and this is in uh, 1 Kings 18, 1, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, go, show thyself to Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. The physical and the spiritual condition of this people was reflected on the outside. What's going on in the inside of you will always come out. Right. And it will always be reflected in your actions. If you believe, it will be reflected. That's it. If you don't, yeah. Yeah. we're going to see some of your ugly. Yeah. But you know what? We all have some ugly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's okay. We're just going to be ugly together and let God put us all together and make things beautiful Amen. in the midst Amen. of time. But the condition was shown on the outwardly. It's shown individually. And that's why I say get with the Lord individually so when we come together corporately, he can begin to move. And when we come together corporately, he will begin to move in our nation because we're crying out together as a corporate body of Christ. This thing is so much bigger than we can think. Yes. Right. So we need to get a hold of that. Yes. This isn't just about coming together, singing some sin hymns on Sunday morning, sitting down, giving your tithes and offerings, going through the service, and leaving and saying, man, that was good. Right, right, right. <laughs> What's going to carry you through for the rest of the week? It's your own relationship with God. And then when we come together corporately, the Spirit of God can move like never before. And that's what I'm believing for this church. We go in there sometimes. One of us, two of us, three of us, four of us, five of us, hands, please. When we pray, okay, we pray in the morning, and the Spirit of God begins to move. I believe he's birthing something yes. in this church. Yes. He's birthing something in this church. And he's going to, just like he used Jimmy Swagger Ministries to spearhead in Baton Rouge and across the world, he's going to use yes. this church to spearhead here in Patterson, Louisiana. I am believing that more Elijah was a worshiper. Yeah. Elijah wasn't a coward. He didn't back down. He didn't stand down. He didn't run, with, so to say, with his tail between his legs when God said, go to Ahab. Right, right. He was telling him to go to the king of the nation. Mm. No, think about that. We get scared to go to a friend yeah. and be like, you know you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. He was about to go to the king. And tell him, God's sending a drought on your land. Hallelujah. And all your crops going to dry up. And all yeah. the economic status is going to fall. And all yeah. your people are going to suffer. He was going. Imagine the fear. He was human. Imagine the fear that could have gripped his heart. But I know that he was talking to the Lord and allowing that sound. That sound. I, I want you to get this. If you don't get anything else. 
The sound of the abundance of rain is what was carrying him through. Because he knew that the rain was coming, the promise was birthed, but he had to get to the rain. So you might be in a season of drought. Okay? But God is a God of the seasons. And he's going to change your season. But don't give up in the process of the season. Brother Shane said it this way. There's glory to glory to glory, but there's everything in between. And that's the truth. There's season to season to season, but there's, there's in the, seasons can be short, seasons can be long, seasons can be cold, seasons can be hot. I, I like spring, you know, everybody likes spring. <laughs> Who doesn't like spring? But then you get to winter, well you guys don't really have that winters like we did, but it's cold in the winter in New Jersey, and you gotta go dig out your car, and get, listen, y'all don't know nothing, you gotta heat that car up an hour before you go to work, you got to dig it out. You got to dig yourself to your car when you're getting there. You're cold. You're freezing. And then you're like, do I really got to go to work now after I just work for an hour and a half trying to dig my car out? Pipes are freezing. Things are breaking. Y'all don't know nothing here in Louisiana yeah. about no snow. But that's a hard winter. Can't wait for spring and summer. But God promised that he would send rain upon the earth, and I'm believing for an overflow. If you can't believe this morning, I'm going to believe for you. And that's what the body of Christ is all about. Because there's going to be a day where I walk in here and boo-hoo like a baby, and I need someone to believe for me. And I'm not even going to act like I won't. Because if I'm here long enough, you're going to see me boo-hooing like a baby, and that's okay too. But I need you to believe for me. Think about this, though. In a drought, there's no water supply. There's no water supply. And because there's no water supply, disease runs rampant. When there is no operation of the Holy Spirit in one's life, sin will begin to run rampant. And sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. <coughs> And I've been there, and I've done that, and I got the t-shirt, and I don't want it back. <laughs> but then everything becomes dry and cracked, where there's no life can begin to sprout. And there's a shortage of food, and there's a shortage of plants, so there's no real substance in one's life that, uh, that goes into a drought, that is, sin is reigning in, in their lives. And we're always looking for one more thing that could be a substance. Hold on to one more thing that can sustain us. But nothing is sustainable. And then drought begins to cause a crisis. We're looking all over the place. What we can do. How we can fix it. What, what's going on. But there's one that we can look to that can reign oh. in your drought season. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> there was a sore famine. Once you have a drought, then you have a famine. So if, you, if we want to keep going in that direction, there will be a famine of the Word of God. And if you, we want to move of God, we need to be in the Word of God. Right. And if you feel like you haven't heard from God, or I, I've been there where I'm like, man, all these people receiving promises, where's mine? Right. I haven't heard from God. <laughs> Get in His Word. Yes, yes. yes. There's so many promises in the Word of God that you can hold on to. But the enemy will get us so locked in on the drought that we forget what we have access to. We forget we have access to the Spirit of God. We forget that we have the parakletos and we're hip to hip. We forget that we have the Word of God and powerful weapons to cause strongholds to become tumbling down. Amen. We have access. Access has been granted by the blood of Jesus Christ. But when we get into a famine or a drought, all of a sudden we're looking how we can get out of it. But God wants to move in That's it. That's right. Amen. He wants to move Hallelujah. in it. Hallelujah. And Elijah heard the rain coming from a distance. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to base it on what my eyes see. I'm not going to base it on how I feel. These people are really in a drought. You might really be in a situation. It's real what you're facing. Yeah. I'm not taking the reality of your circumstance away from you. 
But God wants to move in that circumstance. He wants to move in that circumstance. So Elijah hears the sound of an abundance of rain. And he said, you know what? The condition might look bad. They, they just look horrible right now, the people of God. They were the people of God. But God was about to move. God was about to move. And then you have Jezebel. I'm talking about the process now. Remember, I told you. I was going to go through the process. Because once there was a drought, now there's a famine. Now Jezebel comes and she's killing all the prophets of God. She's just picking them off one by one. But there was a man, and I love this because you don't hear too much about him. See, when we don't feel like people recognize us, God is recognizing some people. Because Obadiah was in position with King Ahab. See, God positioned Obadiah, a man of God, to start hiding the prophets of God so that God's kingdom could move forward. Wow. God will put you in a position. Right, right. But could you imagine what Obadiah had to go through in that position? He was the servant of King Ahab who was worshiping all these other gods. Jezebel is picking off all the people of God. And he's standing there hiding the prophets of God. The true prophets of God. God's going to put you in a position where you're going to be able to stand for the truth. And stand for the word of God. And stand in the spirit of God. And you're going to be protecting the people of God. And protecting your inheritance. And protecting what God has given you. But it might not be the most glorious of places. Because I don't think that Obadiah was like, yes, I'm in the, in the middle of all these, all these people that are living wrongfully. That could be a hard place to be. Yeah. I know some of you have, we have jobs that we have, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Yeah. <laughs> and just like Joseph, he was placed in a position of authority to run, to run um, with King Pharaoh. But... Could you imagine what he was going through? What he had to see? What he had to go through? But there was still a sound of an abundance of a rain. And I want to put this to you. That Elijah, he stood in the drought. And he stood in the famine. And he stood when the people of God were getting picked off. And he still didn't let go of the fact that he heard the promise of a sound of an abundance of of rain and I want to give you this example you guys know I love my dogs so I was watching them the other day and Samson's very a little more timid and Titan's a monster and I give them a bone each but they want to fight over the same bone and so but Samson is so prone to give up his bone like he just lets Titan take it you know I love Titan but now he's like that's my baby um but Titan constantly steals Samson's bum. That's what the enemy does. Right, right. Is that when God drops something in your heart, good. all of a sudden, and I'm telling you, Titan's smooth with it too. He's like a gazelle when he's running, and he just takes that bum right out of his mouth and keeps on running. I'm like, man, Titan, fight for that thing, Samson, get it. And Samson, Samson will not fight. He's just like... Okay, it's gone. And that's what happens with us as children of God. We tend to get a promise of God and we're super excited because Samson, his tail's wagging and he's so excited about his bone. And then here comes Tyan, takes the bone right out of his mouth. But watch. There's moments that Samson gets low on the ground with the bone, tucks it under his belly, and he gets in position. Right, right. And when Titan's coming, he gets this deep growl. And Titan will not mess with Samson's right, bone right. at that point. Yeah. I want to say this. As a children of God, we need to yeah. allow the promises yeah. of God yeah. to take such deep root in our heart that when the enemy comes, we still have a cry. Like that growl. That, get a growl. he's in position get in position guys yeah. <laughs> once he's in position nobody I'm not even getting that bone right, right. at that point because he's in position and he's not letting anybody take it from
from it. And that's what we need to be like as the children of God. Be done with the enemy stealing your promises for I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. Get a growl. And I mean that. So many times we crumble under the pressures of life. Cry out to him. Because I believe the Lion of Judah has the greatest growl of all. And when the enemy comes your way, hold on to that thing. And believe, and Titan will run in circles, or that could be intimidating. But say, nope, not this time, buddy. Not this time. And he doesn't give away what mama has given him. Don't give away what the Lord has given you. of Jesus. Yes. Cover the promises of God. Yes. Cover yourself in the promises Hallelujah. of God. King Ahab, he had forsaken the <coughs> promises of God and forsaken meant to relinquish a commitment to. And because of his misplaced faith, it produced death. When we place our faith in other things and false securities, yes. it will produce death. Death. We will find ourselves in a position of drought and sore famine. But what I love about the Lord is he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. And he constantly allows that stirring. For I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Angela, you forgot, but can you hear it now? Can you hear the sound now? Can you hear it now when we turn back? To the Lord, he begins to stir us yeah. again for greater things are yet to come. You gotta start. Yeah. Listen, I can believe it, but you gotta start believing it. You gotta start believing it. You gotta start believing it in your family. You gotta start marching up down your kitchen floor and saying, I believe the promises of God. I believe the promises of God for my family. Fight for your family. Fight for your marriage. Fight for whatever you need to fight for. Fight for your business. Fight for what you, your own relationship with the Lord. Because Jezebel's coming to pick you off if you're not ready. That spirit of control that wants to control your life and test your faith, it's coming. So get ready. Get a growl in you. Hallelujah. Place your faith back in the master. Look back to him. Because nothing can stop the word of God from coming forth in your life. No demon in hell. No devil can stop the promises of God from happening in your life. And even your own mistakes can't stop the promises of God from happening in your life. Because he kept hearing the sound. And what I love about it is it wasn't just going to rain on Elijah. It was going to rain on Ahab. It was going to rain on the one that had all these other and Jezebel and all them. It was going to rain on the nation. Because Elijah stood fast. And I'm believing that for Crossway Ministry. We need to stand fast for the rain is coming. It's so much greater. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And we might delay the promises of God in our life, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they're denied. Amen. Wow, that's good. Think about that. That's you, good. We might make some mistakes, and we will, but God's delay does not mean his denial. The Amen. only way we can stop the promises of God from happening in our life is if we decide to quit. That's it. Amen. And then, even then, even Brother Shane said it. He said there was still a flicker. There was still a flicker out there. Yeah. There's the backslid and there's still a flicker. Right. Your, your children who heard you praying all as they were growing up, there's still a flicker. Right. There's the, they can yeah. still hear yeah. the sound. Yeah. They can't yeah. stop the sound. You think that the world can shut up the spirit of God that already has been introduced to them? They, they can't stop the sound. Hallelujah. The people that you planted seeds on, in, those people, when we were out there talking to them, praying for them at the um, festival we went to, then nothing can stop the seed now. It's already been planted. Your children, it's already been planted. It's already there. So the Spirit of God is just going to ignite that flicker and the sound of the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. But nothing stops. I love 
love this because nothing stopped Elijah. Not him having to go to Ahab and confront him of his sin, which could have been really hard for him to do. And then he was even called to a place of separation in the brook Cherith. And Cherith meant to be meant separate. And in this brook, he had to be fed by ravens. And he had to drink of the brook. But God provided it for him in the place of separation. Yes, yes. Sometimes, listen, I'm guilty of it myself. I look at the wicked, so to say, that's what the Bible says. And I'm like, why do the wicked prosper? Yep. And, I, and I sit here and I'm struggling, Lord. <laughs> no, really. Come yeah. on, let's get real. Yeah. Yep. I look and I'm like, man, they're making it and they're making it and they're doing this and they're doing that. And, then, and Lord, I'm over here like, I'm over here working from 5 a.m. to 8 o'clock at night. And I, Lord, why, Lord? But you know what? God called Elijah to a place of separation and he worked miracles Hallelujah. in that place. Because Elijah was willing. And it takes a willingness for us to go into a place. I'm not talking about isolation. I'm talking about separation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we were in, when he was at the, the brook, Cherith, all around him, Israel was prospering, so to say. Okay? And then there's a drought. But he was spirit-led and spirit-filled and spirit-controlled. And he allowed... Think about this. The God who controls the elements provided for him mm. when no one else could. Hallowed. The God who controls the <coughs> elements of this world provided for him when no one else could. Mm. You feel like nothing could help your situation? God is going to provide. Right. God is going to provide. Yes. And when he's ready to move you forward, just like so maybe you need to take a look at, and Robert and I were talking about this yesterday. Sometimes God allows things to dry up to move us on. That's right. Yep. So something might be a little more difficult than normal, or, you know, sometimes He's just causing us to grow. So really, you need to get in the presence of God and find out what's really going on. But God has shut so many doors that I thought were Him, and they just kind of get slammed in my face. And I'm like, all right, so we're going this way. So, but God will allow that to direct our lives. But he was being directed to the abundance of rain. So don't take rejection of whatever is going on around you and think that you're not heading in the proper way. Allow rejection to move you in the direction of the abundance of rain. And we need to hold on to that. Because sometimes we get so caught up in what God didn't allow us to do or what we thought was God that we pitch a tent in self-pity and can't move forward anymore. But God was trying to get us to the abundance of rain. Man, Lord, star me to, to know that I'm headed in the direction of the abundance of rain. And though you called me to be separate, I'm not alone. And that you're going to provide for me. And every single time that Elijah was obedient, there was a blessing. Sometimes we can feel like obedience is a burden. Right? I'm being real today. I don't know if anybody's getting this. But I'm telling you, sometimes we can feel like, man, I've been obedient to you, Lord, and I'm still not seeing the abundance of rain. I'm still not seeing this done or that done or this door open. I'm still not seeing my bank account full. Or I'm still not seeing this happen or this person saved or this healed or that healed. Or I'll tell you this, and I haven't been... um. Very uh, transparent in this area. But I have a physical need that is still yet not to be met. And I have been, there's a situation from my past that leaves me ill and different things. And when I get super stressed out, I get sick. And from using and different things like that. And I still have yet to see him, him heal me. Right, right. And sometimes I stand, and I don't know who this is for because I don't speak about this. But sometimes I stand in the back of the church. And we come up for prayer for healing. And I don't come. Because I'm tired. I'm tired. Tired of praying for healing. God, I, I'm just tired. 
you know? So, but God still, there's still a sound yes. of an abundance Hallelujah. of rain. He Hallelujah. still wants to heal. Yes. Yes. He still wants to heal us. And then I get convicted. Because I'm like, I should have went to the altar. <laughs> God, you, because I believe God. I do believe God. I do. But when you've been going for so long, you get tired of going. So you're just like, why do I have to go again? I'll just stand in my seat, Lord. You can just touch me here. No, get him. No, come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Get up and go to the altar because the altar is an expression of faith that God things took longer than others because he wants us to come again yes, yes. because he wants us to come again because he wants us to keep coming to him yes. and I could be like well God you're a harsh tax master for not doing it you're able to come on all these all these things that go through your mind God why aren't you doing it I don't understand why you're not doing this yet but you know what I, who am I to question the fire about what he's doing the creator of heaven and earth and he hasn't failed me yet Amen. Amen. He's greater than dead and buried, and I'm not dead and buried, and even when I'm dead and buried, I'm going to be at the throne of God. Yes. So I'm okay. Yes. Despite what it looks like, I am okay. But remember, obedience equals blessing. So maybe if I would come to the altar, all those times he's like, Angela, come to the altar. Maybe, just maybe, he would touch me then. Because I express faith. Yeah. Not because I walked to the altar. Yes, right. Because it was an expression of my faith that I believe God. Amen. Amen. So on this process of him getting to the rain, he showers. And I know this is a little bit longer, but I don't, you know, I don't care. <laughs> okay? Because God has something to say to you this morning. He's got something to say to you because he wants the rain to come. Amen. And sometimes we got sprinkles of rain. We got a drop of rain. But there's an abundance of rain yes. that is coming. Yes. And when Elijah's journey hits the drought, he hits the famine, the enemy's coming and take, picking off all the prophets and different things. And then he comes to be separate. But then he comes to a widow's house. See, when you are separate, God will begin to use you. Yes. Amen. God can only use what he can use That's right. and what is willing. Right. And I love he even used a donkey, so don't worry. Yes. He can use us all. <laughs> <laughs> but he shows up at a widow's house and she has nothing less but a cruise of oil. Listen, there's going to be times in your life that we were going to have, we're going to have nothing but the oil. We're going to have nothing but the Spirit of God. We're going to have nothing but the Holy Ghost. We're going to have nothing but the Word of God. Everything, see, her husband just passed away. They were about to be evicted from their home. They had lost everything. And she looks up, and here comes the prophet of God. Wow. Yeah. And you know why? Because God told him to go that way. But what if, what if there's someone in need that God needs you to show your testimony to, to live, be living proof that he is alive and we don't go? Mm. Yeah. Because of whatever reason we decide we're not going to go. Because <coughs> we're not obedient. Stubborn, stiff-necked, yes. That's how we can be at times. Yes. But the prophet of God went and she was waiting for a hope. And he was the one to bring it to her. Let me tell you, your children are watching your life. Your yeah. friends are watching your life. Your family is watching your life. They're watching your life. Mm -hmm. I remember one time something happened and my stepdad, he, he's, he's not saved, but I'm believing God. I mean, I'm believing God. God has been orchestrating everything. And he's, he's like right there. He's right there. Yeah. And he said something to me about, well, isn't this God you speak about, Abel? Wow. And I was like, well, excuse me. And I was like, you know what he is? <laughs> he is Abel. He it was so convicting because I was like, they're watching. They're, they're not just wanting me to, to watch. 
watch a video of me preach for 45 minutes or hear Naya sing a worship song. They are watching our lives to see if what we said are we going to live. And and help us, yes, help us, Lord, help us, Lord. But you know what I love about that is I'll go to my stepdad and I'll tell him, and, I, and then I'll tell him the struggle because you know what? They need to see the reality and they need to see the struggle. They need to see it all. So let's not stick our noses up in the air and be like, I, I got this. The Lord's got this. I love to get real with my family. Now, when I was very legalistic, I didn't. I was like, what? You did what? But now... I'm like, oh, I get it. I totally understand. So I'm able to get in the trenches. Right. I'm able to get in the mud and be like, no, I get it. I struggle too. I, I think it's so important for a Christian to be real. Yeah. To be real. Right. Now, that doesn't mean go ahead, you know, put your dirty laundry out your car windows and go drive around town with it and tell, and tell everybody about it, okay? Because, no, you don't need to do that either. Be, be discerning. Be watchful, okay? You share certain things with certain people in the time of need, okay? So let's, let's don't say I told you to go do all that. But... I think it's important to be real, a real Christian, a real Christian, and tell them that, listen, this is what I went through, this is what Elijah went through, but there was still the sound of an abundance of rain. I still had hope, and this woman only had a cruise of oil. And he says, well, feed me first. Could you imagine? I'd be like, my husband just died. I'm about to lose my home. My son is sick, and you want me to feed you? But this was a man of God that the anointing of God began to change her heart the moment he walked in the room. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a room where people start getting uncomfortable and you didn't even open up your mouth? Mm -hmm. And that's because the spirit of God lives in you and he begins moving before you even say anything because you have the anointing of God upon your life. Well, He walks in the room, she feeds him, and all of a sudden, there is so much more abundantly. The oil begins to overflow, and she has more to give her family, and she has more to give her friends. So much oil. I want to be that woman. So much oil that it begins to overflow. The results of her believing the man of God was that the oil began to overflow. And I want to be that person. And I know that you want to be that person. But I want to remind you of this when you walk out this door today. For I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. But every time you begin to believe and God begins to move, there is an attack that comes right behind it. So I wouldn't do my job as a minister of the gospel if I didn't warn you of that. When you begin to believe and God begins to move, there is an attack. And as soon as the flow of oil began to overflow, her son dies. Mm -hmm. Devastated. And she turns where? To the hand of God. (laughs) And says, "You, (laughs) you promised. He promised. God promised. You came and did this miracle. Now my son's dead. And, and he spoke to the son, and the son got up. Why? Because she believed. She believed. She wasn't believing. Now she's a believer, and her heart began to turn. So I, I encourage you today, if you did walk in that door, and you weren't believing this morning, begin to believe him this morning. Begin to trust him this morning, and let the oil of God begin to to flow because the result of her believing was the spirit of God begin to move in her life but not only her life her son was raised from the dead you want your children to spiritually be raised from the dead you want family members or your situation whatever it is to be revived and alive again you want to move of God begin to believe him for I hear the sound of an abundance of rain And to make this short, the people of God began to cry out and look back to the sacrifice. They had a battle after that on Mount Carmel. And the Spirit of God moved and fire fell. It didn't move for the false gods. 
When they began to cry out for the false gods, they found themselves cutting themselves. They found that no answer coming. When you trust in false securities, yeah. you will not yeah. get what you want. That's you can get a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. Yeah. But when you begin yeah. to believe God, when you begin to look back to the blood-stained banner, when you begin to get on your face, when you begin to cry, I mean, we should be a church. I'm sorry to say that should be crying out constantly, 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 constantly. I'm here again. I'm here again. Man, they had church services back in the day that you were there for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours, upon hours in the presence of God. I want that again. Amen. I want God to disrupt our lives. Amen. I don't care about lunch, and I know you're hungry, but that I get that. And I'm hungry too. But I'm talking about a service where God disrupts everything. The children are crying out. The teens are crying out. You are crying out. And I just got to get off the piano and run around the church. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You see me running around, shoes flying off. Well, you better come to Mississippi because they do that all the time. That's the Taurus Nash his church where we're taking the kids next month. Man. No, that's what we, we want the spirit of God and I'm not saying we have to do that but I'm saying I want the spirit of God to disrupt our lives yes. in such a way that it doesn't matter yes. because we're caught up in his presence yes. when we turn back to the altar of God to the sacrifice when we look to the blood and we believe I'm not talking about an acquiescing of the mind because you can come in here and acquiesce all day Right. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, what she says, right? Yeah, I hear a sound. And then we get out of church, and everything we just heard right, right. is passive. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> no, we need to be a church of roots. Yes, I challenge you. Yes, I challenge, God challenged me. Angela, be a church of roots. <clears throat> that even if things begin to break around us, that we're still rooted yes. and grounded in him. After this great battle, I can't even imagine the battle. So after the battle came the rain. <coughs> so you might be going through the battle of your life. But when you look back to the sacrifice, the fire of God will consume that thing that has been consuming you. Yeah. Let me say that again. When you look back to the blood and to the sacrifice and to Christ himself, the, the fire of God is getting ready to consume whatever is consuming you. And he said to his servant, go up now. Now I'm going to challenge you this morning. I, to, I put myself out there when I was talking about healing. <clears throat> That we would get up and that we would believe God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go up now and look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. Will you believe if you don't see it yet? Will we believe if we don't see the whole promise yet? Come on. But you hear the sound. Yeah. 